Hey, what is going on YouTube? My name is James and welcome back to another video. Today we're actually going to be doing episode 5 of Viewer Collection Review and I'm really excited to do this one because it's from a fellow YouTuber, another one uh, who I actually really think is just creating some incredible content at the moment. It's definitely going to be one of the next sort of um, big YouTube channels here in the watch community. But before we get into that right now I'm wearing the SKX and I absolutely love this watch you guys know. Make sure you check out my review of this watch if you haven't watched it already. It's my last day with this camera as of the time of recording in this video so I'm literally making the most of it I've pumped out so many videos with this camera in the past few days that I'm pretty much set for a long time so without any further ado let's get into this this is Josh's collection from perfect timepieces he is an awesome guy make sure you check out his channel I'll leave a link down in the description he's creating some really really high quality content and just amazing editing he's really puts a lot of effort into his videos and it shows and I think you guys should all go check him out subscribe and all that good stuff I'm sorry if I seem really out of breath I've literally just eaten and come upstairs anyway we've been back and forth with email so I don't actually have an email to go with this one but uh, his collection consists of the following Christopher Ward Trident Pro 600 I will leave a picture up of the whole collection here the Hamilton Jazzmaster Viewmatic the Seiko Saab 033 the Seiko Saab 065 and the Tissot Powermatic 80. So yeah, he has a really really interesting collection. I actually really like his collection It's a very mix of You can tell he much prefers his dress watches like sure He's got that diver in there with the Christopher Ward But you can tell he likes his dress watches more classy pieces rather than you know really complicated chronographs or really High water resistant divers. I think his connection uh, his connection his collection really connects with his personality in the terms of He's a really well-spoken guy, you know He seems like a great guy and he's just he's formal He's formal at the end of the day at least that's how he comes across I'm sorry Josh if I'm completely describing you wrong But you come across very formal and this is exactly the collection I could imagine you have so without any further ado Let's just get straight into it. We're gonna start with the Christopher Ward Trident Pro 600 now all the pictures provided are from Josh himself He took these pictures and there's some very very high quality pictures Pictures, so thank you very much for this. I'm using my phone to look at the pictures right now And I've got obviously my notes here. So sorry if I'm looking all over the place I'll try and keep it as high as possible. So Christopher Ward is actually a British company and their watches are Swiss made I I kind of knew that because obviously it says Christopher Ward London uh, Usually on the dial, but I didn't realize they were like had such heavy roots to to British history But they haven't really been around that long. They're quite a new sort of new brand in terms of horology and they're, pr they're creating some interesting stuff recently there's been a lot of uh, controversy around their watches and for many different reasons but I think overall they do create some great looking watches so as I was saying they make four variations of this watch so they've got the quartz the standard auto the GMT and the COC uh, C C O S C uh, auto with the in-house SH21 movement and now this is the standard automatic it's got very impressive water resistance of 600 meters which is um, quite considerable to be honest it's a 42 millimeter case size with a thickness of 13.3 millimeters it obviously has a sapphire crystal it's got a bezel made of z z zirconia dioxide ceramic just ceramic bezel yeah sounds cool okay and it has a beautiful wave pattern on the dial and it comes with either the ETA 2824-2 or the se Selit I always get that name wrong Selita 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 I don't know, SW200-1. Uh, they're basically the exact same movement, it's just obviously ETA are trying to, uh, are going, uh, stopping the, I don't know, there was something going on with ETA, I need to look into that a bit more before I comment on it, but they both have 42 hour power reserve and 28,800 beats per hour, which is eight ticks per second, which is pretty cool. Overall, they're the same movement apart from the Seletta has one more jewel. And the bracelet looks really, really cool. So the design of it reminds me of a Speedmaster mixed with a Submariner. You know what I mean? I don't know if you guys get what I mean at all, but it just, it's got that feeling to it. And I don't know why, I love the second hand, you know that, um, the, the trifork, I think that's what they called it, right? Um, the trifork second hand, which is very iconic to Christopher Ward. I just overall love the design of this watch, and I think it's a very, very nice looking watch. The crown looks hefty as anything as well. It's got that real sort of grip around the crown. I think it has an open case back as well. I've heard the clasp is amazing on this thing, and the, overall the watch is apparently really, really good for the price point, which is... I think around 700 pounds. I'm not too sure. It just looks good with that extra Extra hint of orange in the dial, you know with the text. It just looks really really great You got the day aperture on there overall I think it's a very very good looking watch and a great diver to have in your collection Okay, the next one we're looking at is the Hamilton Jazzmaster Viewmatic and uh, Before we start let's just let's just have a look at that watch. That is one nice looking watch, isn't it? Like the, the hour markers on that just make such a symmetrical dial and I just love the way that looks. The day aperture is so small, the crown so small and also the shape of that case, like the design. 
the way it sort of sh it just looks amazing in my opinion I, I think that's a really really good looking watch I can't fault the design of this I think that is a very very good looking watch. And Hamilton's obviously a brand that has a lot of history you know the likes of like Elvis and stuff wearing their watches they, they're overall got a very wide history even though they're part of the Swatch group um, I still think they're a very respected uh, respected brand in the watch community definitely and I would not mind owning Hamilton one day myself. Now it's a 40 millimeter case size with 11 millimeter thickness so it's got the thickness of a dress watch though the size Size, I would probably say is a bit, bit a bit on the large size for a, for a dress watch. That's me personally. I think a dress watch should be between 36 and 38 personally. But it depends on your wrist size. I've got six and three quarter inch wrist, so. Obviously, if your wrists were a bit bigger, the last thing you want is a 36mm watch. It's got the Sapphire Crystal display case back, ETA 28, uh, 2824-2, uh, 50 meters war resistant, beautiful case shape, like I said, and it just it just looks like a quality timepiece. You know, you look at that and you just go, yeah, but that is very, very nice. And overall, I think the the, the Jazz Masters have just got such a great rep in the watch community, and there's there's so many variations of it as well. There's like one for everyone, essentially. It took me actually a while to find this version that you're seeing right here. It took me a while to find the exact specs of this version um, because there's so many out there. And yeah, I just love it. You know, the point on the second hand of the opposite side as well, um, the sword hands, it's just, it's very, very, very nice. And I think you've got a really great watch. Okay, the next watch is a watch that's growing on me more and more by the day, but the 3.5 version. So this is the Saab 033. The Saab 035 is grow growing on me so much with the wide dial. It just is so beautiful. It's so beautiful. This is considered like the poor man's Seiko or, or the baby, uh, the poor man's Grand Seiko or the baby Grand Seiko, as some people refer to it as. And you can tell why just by looking at it. The build quality and the, the finish just looks amazing. And what people say about these watches as well, you know, he recently reviewed this to so go check it out it was a great review and the watch just speaks quality it really does it looks quality it speaks quality now this is a 38 millimeter case size so much more traditional in my personal opinion for a dress watch 11 millimeters thickness it's got a sapphire crystal with a hard lex for the exhibition case back. obviously sapphire on the front and hard lex on the back back hard lex crystal showing off the amazing 6r15 movement which is obviously hand winding and hackable seiko is it's one of the best seiko movements i think well not one of the best but it's obviously not one of the best but it's out there to compete with the 2824-2 so obviously it's going to be a good movement if it's competing with that. As a 50 hour power reserve uh, or estimated 50 hour power reserve a lot of people say 48 so many people even say 42 it just really depends and it's got 50 meters war resistance so I wouldn't go swimming with it it's probably uh, I'd say it's just sort of splash proof though it will survive I reckon in water um, but yeah it, uh, I can't fault the design of this watch I love the font used for the word automatic on the dial I, I just love the way this watch looks, you know, on the wrist, off the wrist, everything. It looks amazing. And me and Josh have been speaking and we're gonna we're gonna get some videos done together soon, hopefully. He lives off in America, so it'll all be done online, you know, via Skype or, or some other service. So it but we are planning to potentially do a watch swap for a little while, like I did with my dad for the monster. I'm planning to send this off to him at some point um, for one of his watches to potentially review, and obviously he can review one of mine. And I think that'll be really, really great. We've been talking about it, but I think we're going to get a few videos done first before we do that. And I'm thinking maybe I'll try swapping for this. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. We'll have to wait and see what he says. But yeah, it's going to be pretty amazing either way. Okay, next up is a Seiko that I actually really, really, really really liked it was a grail of mine for a short period of time but recently after hearing people's reviews of it and really looking into it it kind of has just drifted away from me a little bit and that is the seiko saab 065 um, known as the cocktail time and this watch has it's got that beautiful dial i still love the dial and i'll never not love the dial it's got that sunburst effect cocktail dial it just looks absolutely beautiful with them them sort of just the markers the way it's done it's just overall such a great looking watch like i just can't stop looking at it. that seconds hand as well is just beautiful automatic again written in that beautiful text um, but this is a 40 millimeter so again it's a bit too large in my opinion for a dress watch it's 13 millimeters thick so it's a bit thicker as well and uh one thing that really surprised me and i didn't actually know this is it's got a hard lex crystal and it's not sapphire yet it costs more than the 033 and the 035 and yet it's got hard legs, it's not sapphire. I don't know why they did that, but that's kind of a bit of a downer in my opinion. Like hard legs is still great. This has hard legs, so I've not got a problem with it. It's just, I think at that price point, you should be getting sapphire pretty much every time. Now again, it has the 6R15 movement. There's no complaints there. Um, and it's got an exhibition case back so you can see the movement as well. Uh, again, 50 meters war resistant and 
yeah, overall, after after really looking into this watch, I still love the design, and I still think if I could own it, I would own it. But overall, I think you're better off with a 033 or a 035, um, if, especially if you want the white dial. I think the 035 is just a perfect, perfect watch. Um, whereas this, I, I don't know, think about it, it's just... I don't know. I don't know what it is about it. It's just something that just doesn't feel right. Um, especially with the fact that they're using Hardlex instead of Sapphire. And it's like you're paying a bit more than what you're paying for the other ones. And they have Sapphire and Hardlex for the back. I don't know. There's just something that seems a little off with that. I'm not going to lie. But anyway, let's move on to the next watch. And the final watch in his collection is a very interesting one. And I had a lot of fun researching these watches. And that is the Tissot... Powermatic 80. Now, can we all just take a moment to appreciate that dial? The dial, in actual fact, isn't like a flat dial. It's actually sort of like textured. Well, not textured. It's um, it's it's got a level of depth to it. Like them, our markers are literally raised from the outside of the bezel. You can see around that um, outside of the case. Sorry, you can see around the outside of the case that it's sort of going inwards, and it's like in inside, whereas the center bit sort of comes out a bit. It's got this real sense of depth to the case and I think that looks absolutely incredible and I think Tissot have done a really really good job here and you know and the price of the Tissots as well they've got such a wide history isn't it something like 160 plus years of history that Tissot have and yet they still create such wonderful timepieces but at such a great and affordable price I don't see how you can go wrong with this at all I think it looks perfect it's just yeah it's amazing I think Sword hands would have suited it better rather than are these called baton hands or they alpha hands. I don't know. I think they're baton hands. I'm not too sure, but I think sword hands would have suited it a bit better, especially with this design. Personally, that's what I think. But then again, with the hour markers being sort of squared off like that, I think the hands suit quite well. I don't know. I don't know what would have done better. Someone will have to show me one with sword hands on and then I can decide. But now it's referred to as the Powermatic 80, or at least it's called the Powermatic 80, which is referring to the 80 hour power reserve. Yes, you heard me right. 80 hour power reserve, that's ridiculous. It uses the exclusive ETA C07.111, um, which is exclusive to this model as far as, as I'm aware. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know anything about watches. That should be very clear by now. Yeah, that's really, really interesting because for the price you're paying, you don't usually get stuff like this. This has a power reserve of 80, not because of loads of uh, fancy extra bits is because it's just really efficient like it's a really efficient movement and That's absolutely amazing. It's got a signed crown as well It's got an exhibition case back as far as I'm aware. It just it looks absolutely beautiful Obviously a sapphire crystal 50 meters wall resistant and it's a 41 millimeter case so again getting a bit too large in my opinion That's just my opinion though and it's 10 millimeters thickness, which is super thin. from pictures that I've seen It just has a really nicely decorated movement um, so yeah, really good job Tissot on this and I think this is an incredible value for money watch Like I don't think you can go wrong at all for that price. Okay, so that is his collection again I'm just gonna open up the picture and put the picture on screen of his full collection I think overall you have a really really nice collection of some absolutely iconic and great pieces uh, You know, you've got a diver in there and you've got plenty of dress watches that can either be dressed up or dressed down That's the cool thing about a good dress watch um, like the Saab 033 Three, three. Um, you know, it's on the steel bracelet, which means it can be very sporty, but then also you can put it on leather or even keep it on the bracelet and it becomes a great dress watch. There's, there's so much play and so much sort of variety you can get with that watch. And I think you've got a really, really good one in there. You know, you've got the Hamilton, um, the 065, as much as I'm a, a bit off about it, I think you even said yourself you, you're considering getting rid of it. Um, so there you go. And that Tissot as well is just beautiful. Um, yeah, really, really good collection. Though I would, I, I think maybe a a, um, um, a chronograph would go really well in this collection, just to really top it off. I think not as like a necessity. Maybe if you are going to get rid of that zero six five, maybe replacing it with a chronograph. Um, that'd be really, really cool. You haven't got any quartz pieces as well, um, which is obviously just depending on taste. Um, so maybe maybe a Seiko Flightmaster. Like I know I suggested that one last time in a few videos ago. Um, but I really think they're great value for money, you know, maybe even a Citizen Eco Drive. Um, you know, they've got some really great looking watches. I don't know. I'm just I'm just throwing some suggestions out there. Let me know what you think, Josh, uh, of my suggestions. And also, guys, don't forget to leave down in the comments what you think of Josh's collection. Don't forget to check out his channel. Link will be in the description. But I'm going to end it here. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I just wanted to go over his collection. I think it's a wonderful collection. And I'll see you all again in the next one, guys. Thank you for watching. Take care and peace out.